Hey, what's up, shot makers? It's Rob here. I got a great guest today. I got Uncle John. Hey, I'm gonna let John explain to you guys who he is right now and how he became the CEO of the Ball Hogs and owner of a team in the Big Three. What's up? I'm Uncle John. I yeah, I became the CEO. I work for a Web3 decentralized organization called Kraus House, and our goal is to have the first ever fan-owned and governed NBA team. So last year when the Big Three announced they were going to do a ownership NFT sale, Kraus House bought all of the ownership NFTs for the Ball Hogs. And we wanted to use our ownership of the Ball Hogs to test out fan engagement and what it would look like if fans wrote their own story on game days and... My role as CEO is to figure out, okay, what is a fan? How would you make somebody care about something the day of a game? And how can we also give back and leave the communities that we're in better than we found them? So that's kind of been my whole project. And we have our fan section. It's the most fun fan section in all of the big three. It might be the only fan section in the big three. We call it the pig pen. <laughs> And we have kids from different nonprofit groups like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Boys and Girls Clubs, and then a few other groups that we host. And we do like paintings of signs before the games for free. And then during the game, we hand out five gallon buckets that the kids can bang on and have fun with. And we just have a big old time. So that's what I do. And it's been a great season so far. We've had just fun. That's the goal. If the kids have fun at the end of the day, like obviously yeah. I want to win, but it, as long as the kids are doing their thing and enjoying their time in the stadium and they are ball hogs fans by the end of the day, I'm happy. But I am I, happier if we win also. Oh yeah. Double, yeah. double win in that case. That's so I bet true. the kids get pretty rowdy with the five gallon bucket. Yeah, they love it. It's fun. They just like to yell and they're already hyped up on caffeine and sugar from the day anyway. <laughs> so I'm just doing the parents a favor. Yeah, giving them an outlet. Yeah. So so right now, Ball Hawks, your season's going. Who are the stars of the team? Who's out there getting the most buckets? Anybody that we need to look out for or recognize? I mean, our team is good this year. Our head coach is Basketball Hall of Famer Rick Barry. He was the guy who perfected the granny shot back in the oh, 70s yeah. and 80s. <laughs> and then we have our captain is Golden State Warriors legend Leandro Barbosa. And our co-captains are Jody Meeks, who played for the Lakers with Kobe and was a rock star for the University of Kentucky. And yeah. then the other co-captain is Jeff Ayers, who went to Arizona State. And then his, I played in the NBA, although I forget what team he played for, but then he's just been an international hooper and has just killed it overseas. And then our other players are Dewan Summers, who played for Georgetown back in the 20 aughts and mm -hmm. also internationally. And he was the big threes fourth man of the year last year. So okay. he was an easy pick for us. And then we yeah. also have Jalen Johnson, who is currently in the G league playing for the Pistons and is just a, a passing extraordinaire. That guy is dropping dimes on the reg. So our team's yeah. great. They've really been performing well this year. Our record is two and two, but, all of our games have been extremely close, and we actually have the highest points in the league so far. So I think we're looking good this year. We lost yeah. this week, which sucked, but this week I think we're going to make a statement win, which Stop I'm excited that. about. Yep, yep. That's awesome, man. So you talked about the challenge of building fandom the day of the event. What are some of the things that you use to overcome that challenge? I know you talked about bringing in the Boys and the Girls Club. Are there any other things that you look for to build this kind of fandom the day of? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, supporting something comes down to relationships. And our goal ultimately is to have the basketball arena and big three games be a place where despite what any kid has come through or is coming from during the week or what they might go through in the future, we're wanting to create like a positive experience where we can encourage people that the sports arena is a safe and fun place to truly be yourself. And it's a powerful environment by default because people are supporting the same thing that you're supporting. You've almost got built-in friends right around you that you may never have met before. And so I think the biggest thing that breaks down like personal barriers is laughter, fun, 
and just the ability to express oneself in a way that people may not be able to do in everyday life. And so if you walk around a city and you just start screaming, go ball hogs in a random <laughs> city square, people are going to be like, who is this guy? But if oh, you do yeah. it in a stadium, it's like you're going to have people join in with you and it creates a sense of community within an arena. And then once those relationships are established in an arena, people go out and they better the places that they came from because they had a positive yeah. experience in the stadium. So we're just trying to encourage people to trust and be proud of who they are. And I think cheering for a team with no inhibitions is a good way to let people know that they are cared for and they are important. Oh, yeah. So we talked about you guys, you're, one of your goals is to be one of the first fan-led NBA owners. So what's the biggest challenge with that? Oh, man, it's a big undertaking. I mean, one of the challenges is finding teams that are wanting to sell, finding minority owners that are wanting to give up their stake in a team. And then in different discussions with NBA teams, you find out that you have to come up with something that works for, we have to find something that works for Krause House, and then we also have to find something that works for the team. And then we have to find something that works for the NBA. And because decentralization, which means there's no one authority figure, it's truly owned by a community, yeah. the NBA doesn't always understand that. And so we have to figure out what works for everybody. And so that's a challenge. And I think that's really the only challenge. When you, in my experience, when I have given fans the keys to drive, they treat the car with respect and they, it's like an honor for them to be able to be a part of something that they love. And yeah. I think in general, fans are not treated as a valued part of an organization. They're sometimes just treated as butts in seats or yeah. as a ticket holder. And I think that that's not to say that venues don't create an entire experience during the game for their fans, but there's always limitations. And so what we want to prove in the challenge is what if the fans didn't have as many limitations as they do and they were able to have access to communicate with the owner or the GM or the manager yeah. or the staff. And the challenge then is figuring out like ways that we can reasonably do that. But everything we've ever tried has worked really well because it's like giving a fan a delicate thing. Like they're not going to throw it against the wall. Like they want to be a part of it and they want to take care of it. And so it's a challenge, but it's also like one of the most rewarding things to see it work. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. I love the concept of all types of fan control sports and things like that. And putting my tech hat on right now, you know, in tech startup world, customer discovery is huge, mm -hmm. right? Getting out, getting feedback from your customers. I'm always a little shocked that there isn't more of that in sports, you know, that there isn't more, not just customer discovery, but like you said, this live fan engagement where they can, like I said, take the wheel for a little bit and make some of the real decisions that in essence affect them the most, right? <laughs> they're the ones who are rooting. They're the ones who are buying the jerseys. They're the ones who are playing your video game. They're the ones who keep this thing rolling. And I agree, the more that you let them in on it, they actually end up treating it with respect and honor. Yeah, it's so cool. And it's been like, I love sports. Sports in a lot of ways has saved my life. And I don't say that lightly. And, and understanding that I as one person can be a part of this greater story then informs my purpose as another person to be like, all right, well, if I can make an impact yelling for people on a court or a field doing something like what then can I do for myself and for the people that I care about and interact with on an everyday basis? It's really empowering. Without fans, there are no sports. If every fan decided, hey, we aren't really being treated that well, let's just stop going to games. Sports wouldn't last for very long. You know, they'd shut down. No. And I don't think we're treated that way. I think we're treated not unfairly, but without as much respect as I think fans deserve. I can definitely agree with that. So, John, we talked about Shot Makers League, and, you know, we're all about challenges. And so now, as a tradition, it is your time to create a challenge. For your fans and for the Shot Makers League fans, create a challenge that you want to see them execute. So our categories are shooting, dunking, dribbling, training, and then the very exclusive random, where you get to use your creativity to come up with whatever you want. So Interesting. which challenge are we going with? Okay, I have a clarifying question. Does random just like 
outside of basketball, just like a random challenge that someone just yep. does in general. Yep. Rando can be outside of basketball. Uh, outside of on the court type basketball. Oh gosh. I think I'll play it safe and do a shooting <laughs> challenge. Although if I'd known random was a category, I could have come up with something pretty wacky. But I'll play it safe. For the shooting challenge, we're gonna pay homage to our head coach, Mr. Rick Barry, as seen in his cartoon there. And what I want fans and shot makers to do is we're going to do a free throw challenge, but you have to complete the free throws granny style like Rick Barry did in the 70s. Rick Barry's shooting percentage from the free throw line was unreal. Fourth greatest of all time. And he did it all just between the legs shooting. So y'all need to go to the free throw line, shoot 10 free throws, and make eight of them doing granny style only. Let's go. You heard it here, Uncle John. He's bringing back the granny shot. <laughs> the granny style free throw made famous by Rick Berry. Also Wimp Chamberlain, but Rick was the man at it, though. John, it's been a pleasure having you. Anything you want to leave the people with that the shot makers and the ball hog fans can go check out or you got guys got coming up? You can catch the big three on Saturdays and Sundays. The first three games are broadcast on CBS. And then the games following the CBS broadcast, you can catch live on, I think it's either big3tv.com or tv.big3.com. If you go to their website, you can find Big 3 TV and you can catch the Ball Hogs this Sunday. We're going to be in Miami. So we'll be on the Big 3 broadcast. So tune in, follow us on Instagram at Big 3 underscore Ball Hogs. Same handle on Twitter. Interact with us, holler at us, and then check out Kraus House, which is our parent organization at www.kraushouse.club and we have a discord server that we do all of our fun cool things in so check us out 